I am Audrey Johnson, and this is On the Couch with Audrey J. Welcome back to the final segment of my conversation with Jackie Thompson, Lisa Shombly, and Ruth Azarte. And that is because you really need to truly vet people. And I didn't always vet people, not just the people who come to work for you, but the people that you allow in your personal space. And you can't hand over trust just to anyone. No, And because as we all know, I'm sure we've all been like bamboozled by someone that we thought was a decent human being and they turned out not to be. Yeah. Um, so that was, there were a lot of tricky folks around Prince because, you know, that someone with that kind of genius and that kind of money behind him and that kind of stature mm-hmm. and reputation, it brings out like a lot, there, there's a lot of good people who want to be around that, who want to like really focus on the work. And then there's twice, three times, if not seven times as many people who are the the antithesis of that mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. those people uh it's they're like a swarm of cockroaches and you they're hard to kill and just when you you've gotten a couple you know a couple more is like come out from under the fridge and like you're you know it's just a it's a it, it can be the entertainment industry is not for the weak hearted It's, it's definitely, you have to have a thick skin. You have to have, if you really want to succeed, you really have to have uh, an acumen, not only for business, but to work and to be consistent with your work and to have a work ethic. Um, I know that there are a lot of terrible people who fail up, but they do so by, um, by means that are not um, necessarily, uh, uh, long lasting. There's no longevity and being a scammer or, you know, a con artist or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and eventually your reputation will catch up to you. And, Absolutely. and I feel like I know that, I know that when someone like myself or Lisa or Jackie or any other number of people that worked with him, that were crystal, that were just people that understood what being professional is like, and always, you know, bringing prints into, always representing Prince in the most, I mean, I know I talk a lot of smack, but honestly, when I was working, I was, I did my best to bring the very best of Prince into whatever conversation I was having because, and even Prince told me himself, but he was mostly clowning on what I would wear or what my hair looked like. But in, in actuality, I was, we were all representatives of Prince. And so how we conducted ourselves was really imperative on how Prince was perceived. So Jackie had mentioned something about like in the early eighties when people would say, well, you know, you couldn't look in his eyes and you couldn't, there was this sort of asshole mystique that was created. I'm not sure how much of that was Prince or Mm -hmm. how much of it was handlers or people who wanted to create Mm -hmm. fear and antagonism. Um, White folks, he didn't men working with Prince during that time. (laughs) Yeah. And I think people do that just to keep themselves safe and, and territorial as well yeah like, you exactly know I mean? like, and to keep others at so you bay that are and... that are coming into the situation yeah, yeah. Sure. I, I i i mean yeah it's 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 very egocentric in some ways yeah. Yeah, and those, so i just those you are know some serious hard lessons um that you all took away from that experience um and definitely that, definitely brought into your career now, which is what I want to jump into is what you guys are doing now. Um, What um, are you looking forward to? What's keeping you hopeful? What's keeping you all motivated? Um, And I'm going to start with Lisa. Lisa, what's what's going on with you? Well, so one of the the things that I really stayed with me from what Prince taught us is he he said, um, think big and then think bigger. So that was really important <clears throat> when uh, having ideas and it was, it was so cool to be in his orbit to see um, someone create something from nothing and just create new ideas and new ways to do things. And then he would break rules. Like, you know, when he, um, 
uh, I think so Ruth when when he had given uh, the copy of musicology with a ticket with buying a ticket or something about the the newspaper anyway when he had given when he had reached platinum status with that album I think RIAA changed the rules Mm -hmm. after that you know like so he he did things that made people change rules so that to me just always stood out um and so what I'm what I've been doing for the last 10 years is creating a a speaker company um we we sell speakers uh for the for pro audio Reptone. and yeah Reptone. and it's it's been it's been such a journey but it has been so rewarding and um being a reference speaker for the industry and being um so having partner being partners with uh with dave in in that endeavor and you know making products for our peers and so it's really important and so for the future we've got some some cool um products coming up and to 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 stay uh, ahead of the curve and so yeah it's very exciting and um being able to have that foundation of um of working with him so early on in my career. Cause I, I always say that that was the pinnacle of my engineering career mm-hmm. and that's okay. <laughs> so I was like 21, but I was at the pinnacle. Um, but after that, I worked with some amazing uh, musicians as well. But, and then um, yeah, just going into this businesswoman manufacturing chapter of my life has been really great. Do you Thank ever you. think you'll get back into the studio um, as a, Recording well, engineer, is that something that you still mm, want to do anymore? Or no? That's the thing is like, I was so, I was so spoiled as a recording engineer because I got to record Prince. And then when I moved to LA, I recorded George Duke and um, lots of like the best session musicians in LA and even did some sessions for Justin Timberlake. And I just, you know, got to work with some more people. And for me, that's okay. I, I feel like when I was engineering, because production was my thing, my thing, mm-hmm. and, and business was always my thing. So engineering, I would really need to be super inspired. And I kind of tell people like, you know, unfortunately, most of my inspiring clients are passed away. So no, mm-hmm. I'm good. My speakers are in the studio. And it's kind of how uh, a way that I'm still in the studio. So yeah. Gotcha. That's great. What about you, Jackie? Well, um, I, I mean, you have lots of things going on and what, what's I your, do. well, I mean, so let you just talk about what it, the things that you want to talk about. And if you could talk a little bit too about the foundation and maybe what your long-term plans are for that. Yeah. Um, wow. That's a lot to unpack, but um, the, um, I got into, um, you know, being fearless, trying new things. And as Lisa said that, uh, you know, what Prince would, you know, say, what was that exact quote? So I get it right, Lisa. Oh, think big and then think bigger. Right. Yeah, exactly. So um, I thought big and it became bigger. Uh, and it was a, uh, an agave spirit company that I um, drummed up in my brain in 2012, 2011 uh, to, uh, well, the, the first thing was to really kind of create a brand, what it was going to be. And it was kind of getting burned out in music for a bit. I needed a, a change of, of, of pace and to do something different. And so I uh, did that, started this new, brand new company. Didn't even know about tequila that much or an agave spirits and really kind of learned it and worked it and became passionate about um, that particular spirit. And, uh, started the company uh, and it's grown it's been 10 years and it's uh, really really taking off now um during that time i stepped down from there um as the day-to-day but um uh went back into because i started missing music and my tribe so to speak <laughs> and uh getting creative and so i really um just got back into music again and creative and branding and strategy. It just kind of grew from, from, Oh, I I can do all these things. You know, I have that these, this creative talent to do branding and strategy and building all the, you know, that into the, this um, consulting company that I have now that I do, which is, it takes on different lives with different um, uh, 
people that I work with. I work with a WNBA player. She's got a book coming out. So I'm helping her bring her book to, um, to fruition and to, to the public that's going to be happening. So it's strategy, it's branding. It's like really helping her craft that. But I do that with different companies and, um, the company that I started back in 2012 was called Revel. And it really gave me the ability to do the, all the different things that I, I felt talented at doing, which was, you know, uh, creating um, the creative part of it, um, the creative directing part of it, the putting the business part together um, from the business plan, writing the business plan to the marketing strategy. So, um, and, and building that, but then also getting into um, um, how to, um, uh, do the business side, which is, you know, bringing in investors and understanding series A, series B, all the different cap tables, all the stuff I didn't have any clue about, I learned from that. And so I take that and I'm building that now in, in what I do and with different clients and what their needs are. Um, and so I'll be building different brands and helping different people. And that's, that's what I love doing. And it's some of it's music still, I have uh, helped build a, 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 a independent label uh, with different artists on that from scratch to um, working with WNBA players to working with uh, diversity and inclusion companies and helping re, re strategize and, and, and what they're doing. So it's, it's just whatever I feel like I want to do working with cool people uh, and, and cool things. I just want to work on a higher level with people that are doing higher level things that I just have to love working with you and I have to love what I do. And so I'm at a space in my life where I'm going to choose that. And I have been able to have been blessed to be able to, to be in a space to choose the people I want to work with, um, the teams that I want to be around and what Ruth had said, you know, letting people in, keeping people in that you trust, that you love and that you want to, to be around. I want like everybody I work with, I could go break bread with. I, that's mm-hmm. how it's got to be. I want to be able to go and have dinner and enjoy. If I can enjoy your company and have dinner with you, those are the, those are the people I want to be around. So that's where I'm at in my life right now. And it, it's, um, I feel really good about it. And, you know, Prince has played a big place in my heart as far as just like, he's, uh, you know, helped uh, with like a roadmap and a, and a, and a you know, um, uh, for me, on 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 what to do and what not to do <laughs> too right yeah yeah so it's it's not always about he did everything perfect yeah th- those things i taught i i learned some of the biggest lessons by some of the things the choices he made that weren't always the best choices mm-hmm. so. that's just as important equally as yeah. important if not Absolutely. more sometimes yeah uh ruth um I have to say, uh, once again, I've forgotten what the question was. <laughs> oh, my God. I have long COVID. I'm going to blame it on long COVID. I literally, like, I space out for, like, I mean, I heard everything Jackie said, but I totally, and Lisa, but I was like, what? Huh? Where am I? <laughs> what day is it today? Basically, um, it's kind of what what you're doing now, what you're hopeful for in the future, kind of where are you going, that sort of thing. Okay. Uh, Thank you for repeating that. (laughs) I'm like, am I the only one here with Alzheimer's? Um, I, I, uh, so after Prince, I I just freelanced. Um, There was a time where I just actually couldn't work. And, um, and I've been freelancing. I, I, because of working with Prince, you basically can do nearly everything except for like neurosurgery. Um, <laughs> it's <laughs> you absolutely. <laughs> if you might at a Holiday yeah. Inn, you probably could. <laughs> I mean, literally, you absolutely. Yeah, if you go to a third world country, you could probably do neurosurgery. Just Google it, um, YouTube it while you're at it. Um, no, but seriously, like you literally feel like you could walk away and just slay dragons <clears throat> and that's like that's probably one of the, the the best feelings to have is literally knowing that you are capable of doing anything um so i've been consulting and i just do freelance work and i do everything well in the beginning i i'm gonna be honest like i'm gonna keep it real i could only manage to walk dogs 
<laughs> right after Fritz. That's all I wanted to do. Don't give me people. <laughs> I cannot deal with people. I will walk your dog. And then I did some forensic accounting work. And then I did, you know, I did a variety of things. And then I just started consulting for other people. Um, and the last, uh, the last consulting gig I had was working with the Hollywood Commission with Anita Hill, um, Kathy Kennedy, um, and uh, Nina Shaw, and uh, Frida Caper Klein, who is a uh, venture capitalist in uh, Northern California. And these women are amazing, astronomically amazing. And it was like such a joy to see and to work with these women who have, um, you know, uh, you know, their eye on the prize and they work towards, uh, you know, trying to implement a system for the entertainment industry, you know, to minimal, minimalize, uh, you know, so sexual harassment as well as um, uh, not reinventing the wheel, but really honing in on diversity and inclusion and um it's 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 tedious it's like a tedious process to to go through the corporations and get especially entertainment as a whole because there is no hierarchies of sorts um so it's been a very interesting time i spent a very interesting uh um nearly 2 years with them um <clears throat> And uh, currently, I've just decided. I, I had talked to Jackie about it. I, I, I am deaf. I am doing my own pivot, um, and I am doing my own uh, prince, prince, prince uh, moment, and that is to reinvent myself. And I have taken great strides into uh, going back into writing, which is which is what I think I'm I'm better apt at because I definitely have a hard time with people <laughs> so I'm like writing you can do by yourself um or very nim minimal amount of people um so I'm going back into that I I have started um I said both ladies on here know I started with I need to close the chapter on my prince uh history and so I had a very diff I had very um uh, a, a difficult time with the grieving process. Um, and so my way of grieving was writing. And so I ended up writing, I'm probably at nearly a hundred thousand words, um, sort of like a memoir on my time with Prince. And so I kind of just want to finish writing that out, whether I do anything with it or not, I just have to finish. Mm -hmm. And then um, uh, from there, I'm going to go forward and see uh, what the, world in in writing has for me um so it's it's kind of uh, a little late in the game but the one thing i've learned with prince is like I, the one thing that i have actually from my time with prince is i don't care i don't care what people think i don't care if people think like i'm too old to be starting anew again or or i'm not young oh, enough never or too I'm late. Not whatever never too or, yeah like i literally don't care so I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And, uh, you know, if it doesn't pan out, I'll pivot to something else. But for now, um, like you can't just give it a once go to see if it pans out or not. You like, you have to persevere. And if this is something I really want to do, the, the grieving process has taken me on this route. But if I want to continue it, because this was something I had planned on doing anyway, before I got the job with Prince, then I'm going to probably see it through as much as possible. And if at some point in time, you know, I'll, I'll, I don't think I'll ever stop writing, but you know, I do have to like pay my rent. <laughs> so if it doesn't pan out, you'll see me. Your dog, your dog corner. walking, your dog walking. I'll be, you'll see me, you'll see me hustling on the street corner with a dog. <laughs> I was like, is that Ruth and her five dogs? me walking dogs. Shit, I don't Shit. care. I and I know that. because I gotta tell you. No, it's so cute. Love me dogs and rock. I love them. Yes, with, with no conditions. It's unconditional love. Yeah, and I love oh, food besides their food. You got to pay right. food. Yeah, yeah. Well, you I like how, like literally in my car. I have a bag of treats for dogs. I don't own a dog, but I have nothing because I have I have so many friends who have dogs, and I love every single one of them. Wait, you haven't seen Hawk yet. Have you? I have not seen. Oh Hawk. my god! So, uh, Audrey, I um so. I, you know, I moved into a house and Julian was always wanted a dog. He said, since 
he, you know, for 13 years and he's 13. So he's, <laughs> so he's, he's wanted one since he was his born. Whole life. <laughs> his whole life. He's wanted one. So he, so I've been, you know, on my days of rescue, and, you know, I'd been, you know, on that for a while. Cause I knew that when I got a dog, it would be through a rescue and I was going to support my day. And so, um, so got into the house, backyard, everything. And I'm like, okay, it's time for, for a dog. And so it just hop, kept popping up on the IG feed. And I was like, Ooh, a cute little pug. And so, um, so I hit my tay up and I said, Hey, um, is Hawk still available? And she says, yeah, girl. And then she vetted me like crazy. Like, you know, you know that when he Julie goes off to school, who's going to have the dog after? I was like, me, I get it. I understand. She says, you know, I had asked that. She says, well, you know, you're my girl, but you know, we're girlfriends and all, but uh, you know, I have to ask that. So anyway, so Ruth, I, I have a, a, a Mexican pug rescued from Mexico from um and Lisa, and uh, his name is Hawk, and so he's been at the house for a couple weeks now. And long story short, I realized that he still speaks Spanish. <laughs> oh, I love it! <laughs> Duh! Like I had been trying, like right, like because he's from the streets of Mexico, right? And so, like, I, so I'd been like, hey, let's go, you know, this type of thing. And so he would just come and be like, what are you? Yeah, exactly. so check it out. So I go, Hawk, vamanos. And he look, he turned around and I oh. was like ready to roll. I was like, oh my God. That's amazing. It's amazing. He speaks Spanish. <laughs> so I got to. <laughs> some Spanish so man. I have a Spanish. Oh speaking. my God. I can help you translate. Hawk. Hijo de tu madre, entrete en ese coche. Yeah. And I'm trying to figure out how, to, how do you say sit down, sit? Siéntate. Like, Siéntate. Siéntate. Yeah. Siéntate. Ahora. Siéntate. So anyway, that's 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 my world right now with dogs. It's awesome. So it does it does have a prince story to it in a way because yeah. of my day and I thought I'd bring that in there, Audrey, for you. I want to thank you, ladies, um, for spending um, this time with me and being my very first guest on the show. I just, I can't thank you enough. I couldn't think of a better way to start off this journey for me. And I want to thank you for um, reminding us of this part of his legacy as far as empowering women, as far as instilling fearlessness in people and, and making you understand that you can do anything that you can think. Mm -hmm. I think those are three very powerful things um, in his legacy that I saw woven through the conversation that we had today. So thank you for joining me on the couch and I hope that you will return um, in the future and, and keep us, Keep us posted on all of the things that you have in store. Thank you again. Lisa. Audrey, I want to say Thank something you. real quick too, is that it's so great that you are empowered to do your thing and you're doing, you're envisioning, you, you saw it and now you're creating a reality. And then you said, I'm going to ask people, you know, to do, be a part of it. And I want to thank you for asking me to be on, on, in your space and on your couch. Thank you. Thank you for Same. saying yes. Thank you, Audrey. I hope I didn't leave a stain on your couch. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, you know. I if mean, you haven't you know. gotten your calling for comedian by now. I know, right? Right. right. So it's she's totally calling. Yeah. calling. Yeah. 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 So that might be that might be if the writing falls through, maybe I'll I'll go back. No, there that, that has to be a part mind. of it. Part of it. Comedian yeah. is your comedy is writing. Yeah. Exactly. It would have been it would have been great on Living Color. Thank you so much, Audrey. Good luck in the future. This is Thank awesome. You. Thank Thanks you, Lisa. for being a part I, of it. I appreciate it. Thank you for saying yes. Thank you for joining me on the couch. Please like, follow, share, and subscribe so you're notified when new episodes are available as we continue to look at the impact of the legacy of Prince Rogers.
Nelson.